Hi, this is Amy Wood again at CRL, and I think we've um, I think it's about time for us to go ahead and start with the webinar. So um, I'd like to welcome you all and thank you very much for joining us to um, learn how CRL uses the 583, the Mark 583 field for um, transferring information to its paper database. Um, just so you know, we are recording the webinar. And um, just to kind of keep the recording clean, we're, we're asking that if you have questions during the webinar, if you'll just use your, the chat function and um, text your um, or type your um, question to us, and we'll make sure to address those at the end. So again, welcome to the, the Mark 583 webinar. So just to start, um, CRL uses the 583 um, in a little mod in a in a way that's a little modified from the way the OCLC Print Archives Disclosure um, Pilot recommends. However, all of um, all of the sort of the um, the guidelines and the rules for for um, for the content do come out of the same the same foundation and that is in the preservation and digitization and actions terminology which goes back to the development of that um, those guidelines goes back to to the 80s so um, I invite you to take a good look at, at the um, PDA as it's called and it's it's quite extensive uh, in terms of the terminology that it that it uses although I think given its age you if you are involved with um, print archiving activities, there, you may have suggestions for going forward and including new um, terms, new terminology, and and we hope that you would you will become active um, participants, I guess, in in making the document better. Um, and I would invite you to to view the OCLC Print Archive um, Disclosure Guidelines. It's on the OCLC website. It outlines in detail. Um, the different fields that they use, which are not included in in um, the ones that we require for paper, and the main difference between what um, the fields that that OCLC includes and what and our guidelines are that that we don't um, paper the paper database is not used for resource sharing, and that's a, a very important part of OCLC's. Um, Involvement with with print archiving or shared print um, activities, and so um, so information that you would want about um, setting up um, a new symbol or setting up a GAC or any um, of those things, you should really um, work with OCLC with that. So um, CRL began using the the 583. Um, because the Print Archives Registry was in development about the same time that the OCLC uh, pilot project was going on. And the impetus for using the 583 for OCLC was um, that it didn't require a lot of additional sort of learning or, or work for participants to to be able to use this, this standard. The, the technology was already there, the guidelines, the terminology, all of that was still is, is in place. It's just a matter of tweaking it a little bit to um, to fit the needs of the print archiving um, or shared print world. So um, the slide that you see um, now that says JSTOR record in paper, that that is an example of of what the information, how we've mapped, I guess, the, the sort of user view of of the mapping of that data that goes into um, the 583. And I imagine one difference between our display of the data and and OCLC's for, um, display of the data is that when you have multiple um, condition issues, we separate those into into several or into a, a new line for each condition issue. So you can see here that we have um, it's five, um, I guess, lines showing, showing the data. Those would actually, when you create the 583, you would actually only create three um, separate 583s, but we've pulled that last condition reviewed 583 into three different um, 
lines, um, just for ease of, of reading, I think. So, um, so I just wanted you to get an idea of, of what the end result um, looks like, you know, what we're trying to achieve, and we're trying to, um, we're trying to, I guess, expedite or make um, the transfer of the data as easy as possible, and it, with the end result of this display in mind. So the first sort of overview of the different subfields that that we that CRL uses for the 583 um, here this is the, the sort of list of, of required fields. Um, not every field, not, or sorry, not field, but um, subfield. So this is um, the list of the required subfields for the the 583 field. Each 583 is is a little bit different. Um, we require three 583s, um, uh, or I should say we require at least one 583, the committed to retain, um, and that's the same as, as the OCLC recommendations. Um, so that one uh, committed to retain is required. Um, the completeness reviewed and the condition reviewed are, are recommended. But if, um, depending on how you are providing CRL with the data, we can um, produce the, uh, the completeness. And depending on how specific your data is, even the condition reviewed. Um, and we'll, I'll show you examples of, of that later. So each of these, the committed to retain, the completeness reviewed, the condition reviewed, each of those is considered an, an action and that would go in the, the subfield A. Um, and depending on what the subfield A is, that um, has specific requirements in terms of other subfields. For example, the completeness reviewed and the condition reviewed would each have a, a subfield L and a subfield Z um, for status and, and a note field that, um, that you wouldn't have with the, the committed to retain. Um, and We'll show examples of that as well. So the committed to retain, these are the, um, that, that's the shortest of, the, of all the um, fields, or has the fewest of the subfields involved. And these are the required subfields for that field. And so, uh, um, in the, so you can see um, the, the subfield delimiter in, um, in the left-hand um, column. And the name of the of the of the subfield in in the middle, and then just tried to give some some examples. And I think the most um, perhaps the most important of what I think of as the most important in of these subfields is really that is that subfield three and how CRL is is trying to really set um, the bar high for having this subfield three as clean as possible, as, as standard in terms of its construction as possible. Um, we, we have seen um, in, the, in the paper database already there is sort of a, a, ver a variation in how people express the holdings, um, and we, we are, are really trying to standardize, standardize the expression of those holdings. We have taken um, as as our standard the ANSI NISO you can see a Z thirty nine seventy one um, rule for um, for expressing um, holding statements, and within that, if if you all are familiar with that those those rules or those guidelines, um, there's quite a bit of variety even within that um, that standard or those guidelines. So we we have chosen sort of for ease of, of user viewing, or in our opinion, ease of user viewing, um, to go with what I would call a detailed separate display. So it has the, the volumes, each with its um, uh, label of the V, with um, separate from, from the years. And then um, from there, we indicate where the gaps are um, using the common um, punctuation. and. From that, we will then pull out the gaps that you'll see in um, in the, the next 583, the completeness reviewed. So, um, 
So here's the um, the next 583 that um, should you um, in in your data gathering be um, tracking the gaps. Um, you would want to make sure you um, you include that information in the in the subfield Z, the note, um, and it does have to. Um, it does have to match what the subfield three says. So if you indicate that, you know, through a comma or, or something, some other punctuation, that there's a gap in your holdings, um, it, 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 has to, it has to match. The, the one that's actually missing has to be in the subfield Z. Um, so in terms of the, this is, this is I think the, the most complicated part of this, because most of this is, or I would say a good, Good number of these subfields are repeated from from the um, the committed to retain, but um, I think the most complicated and where you'll really want to develop, I think, your own guidelines for expressing the the data according to the terminology in the PDA is in um, in the the subfield L and Z. Um, they, the, the guidelines indicate whether or not you know you should you should say something is missing or if it's missing the cover or missing particular pages and I use, using I think as strict guidelines as you can locally to keep that that data consistent really helps us on, um, in in using the data in in paper and being able to analyze across um, the different programs, um, so um, so that's I think where you'll you'll really want to um, to to work you know with your colleagues to keep that that data as standard as possible, and this this is also where I think some of some of the PDA can be confusing, um, and so I know some local programs have has have set specific guidelines. Um, I think one of the things that I I wouldn't have thought goes in the completeness, but um, but it does, and that's the um, binding anomalies. I think I would have thought that was a condition issue, but um, so I think there there are things like that that although it seems relatively straightforward um, when you're looking at the, the the names of all the subfields. Once you start examining your material and and trying to express it, um, it sometimes can be a little challenging. And, um, and as I said, since most of these uh, notes are um, sort of free text, keeping them um, as clean as you can um, really enables the analysis of the data. And the, the third 583 is, um, is the condition reviewed. This one is almost exactly like the, um, like the completeness reviewed. Um, including the subfield L and the subfield Z, um, it's just the the terms in the in those two subfields, as well, of course, the action um, term that that separates this from the completeness. Um, and this is the one. Um, this is, um, and I um, I should have said this with the completeness reviewed, but um, in both the completeness reviewed and the condition reviewed. If if there are multiple um, problems in um, with your material, these um, the subfield L and the subfield Z are repeatable. So even though we have displayed um, multiple condition issues on separate lines in paper, you would want to include all of those different um, problems in a single um, field, a single 583. You just want to um, include multiple subfield L and subfield Zs. And the documentation um, indicates, um, this is one that I guess never made sense to me, they indicate having all the subfield Ls together and then all the subfield Zs together, but I have to say when we construct ours here, um, we, we just sort of put them in pairs. So if, you know, um, if there are missing, missing covers, on several of the volumes, we'll put the subfield L missing covers, then um, then um, put it put exactly which issues or, or volumes have those missing covers in the subfield Z with it, and then use another subfield L for foxing, 
and another subfield C for which um, issues or volumes have um, the foxing problem. So um, when you put all of the subfields together or um, and, and into the separate 583s, this is what they look like constructed. And um, I've just tried putting the, the bits that are unique for each of the um, different actions in, in red, so you get an idea. Otherwise, it gets to be a bit of a blur um, or just sort of a string of characters. But um, you can see how the subfield I and the subfield Z repeat the, the terms, and that, that's part of the guidelines, not, not an error. Um, and I'm not quite sure why that is, but that, the, those are the guidelines. And when we, we display them, you, you do actually see both, I think, the, the terms um, duplicated. But, um, and this next one is an example of, um, of a, the third 583, the complete, um, but um, that third, um, so the third um, 583 should be a condition reviewed, and you can see that we have both the torn covers and the tight bindings and, um, in the same um, mark 583. It does, um, it does get a little confusing as you construct these. <laughs> this next um, slide is, is the same as the one we saw in, in the beginning. It's just a, a duplicate of that that first slide. So this is the end result after you have um, used all of the different um, subfields in the, and described the actions. And I, we'll just go through, I just thought you'd, you'd want to see um, how the different information that you're inputting in the 583 is um, sort of mapped. So um, the part that is, is circled in, in red, the material specified, is um, that subfield, that's where that subfield three is mapped to. And um, sometimes I think it can get a little overwhelming. We'd, we've repeated the data, but we want to make sure that, that you know that the, each action actually goes with that, um, that group of material. It is, it is possible, I haven't seen anyone do this yet, but it is possible to have a um, committed to retain a, a large group of material and and that and to disclose that you have only um, reviewed it reviewed the material that half of the material or a third of the material for condition problems so um, so it is possible that um, you could have different data in this sub in the subfield three even though the the pair or the I guess triplet of 583s goes together, but I, as I said, I, I have I haven't seen an example of that at all with any of the participants of paper. But nonetheless, in case there were, um, we repeat that data, and then the the subfield A, the um, the action um, that's noted is um, there in the middle, and the date of the action. Which um, so far, as we as we have gone forward with these programs, that date of action is is always has always been the same for all of the the terms, um, all uh, for all three of the actions if we have, and I think that's just where we are in terms of our um, I guess the development of our different print archiving programs because it's certainly possible that someone could um, provide the information to us now. And, that they're committed to retain something and then be able to, at a later date, um, review the material for uh, condition issues. And they, they wouldn't need to resubmit a new date for um, the committed to retain. They just may submit um, the, the data of when they, um, they reviewed the material for the condition. And the, um, the next is the, um, where the, the subfield D, which is, is sort of the length of time um, or the expiration of, of your um, commitment to the, the material. Um, and all of the programs that, that have been involved with paper so far do have um, an end 
um, usually it's 10 or 25 years or something like that when the material I think would be up again for review. This is a CRL record and for that um, since it is part of, of our bylaws in terms of, of the material that we take that we do retain it, it permanently, um, we, we have chosen to rather than just give a, a, a date 10 or 20 years out um, just to um, have that time period as permanent. I've also seen some um, people um, just not not give not give a date, and all of those those terms are are in the the PDA and the OCLC guidelines. Um, the next is the the validation, and CRL does um, validate its JSTOR collection at the at the issue level, um, and the different um, the different terms that you that you can have here are no valid or not validated or no validation, um, page level, issue level, volume level. Um, and um, in the case where CRL is is automating the generation of of inform uh, information about gaps, um, we are um, we are we're putting no validation. So if you if you're providing gaps, there's some there's some level of validation. But if CRL generates, and that's just we want to be able to we want people to know that um, the difference between you know, sort of a manual check that, that these gaps actually exist and, and gaps that are produced in an automated way. The next is the subfield F, it just um, is the program and most programs have established you know, an, an acronym for their program and, and that's usually what goes in that subfield F. Next is the subfield J, um, which is um, just the institution that um, in which the where the that is still in control of the material or is managing the material. And then um, we have the subfield L and Z. So you can see these are displayed together, and as I. Um, indicated before, you know, where there's that sort of redundancy in terms of using the, the term missing um, that appears here, and it certainly wouldn't be the uh, only place in Mark where there's redundancy, but um, so we're just keeping on with the tradition. And um, here we have the subfield five, which is that OCLC symbol, and that, that symbol is the, the Mark organization code, so it's not. It's different than your OCLC uh, symbol. And that I have seen some, in fact, we were a little confused about that in the first place, too. So, um, so in terms of um, CRL helping to create this data, um, we have, um, we've worked with um, a few participants now and have learned some things along the way about working with with um, data from, from the participants. And we are, are confident, I think, that um, these are, are ways that we can receive the data and help um, transform them into the 583 in case um, that's not a field that you are using in your catalog or you're just not using your catalog to um, track the material that you, that you have um, in your print archive. So, um, so having the data in a in a spreadsheet, or um, or having it sort of in your if you do put it in your catalog, it can be either in the as long as your holdings are um, accompany your bibliographic records. Sometimes they're separate, sometimes they are intertwined, um, but we can work with either. Um, and then we can also use the 583 um, embedded in the record. Now that's something that that OCLC. Um, doesn't do. They do need um, a, an LHR. They need a, a holdings record um, for for the 583. But um, I know there are some ILS systems where, in fact, ours is one where we we can't output um, the data completely from our our holdings records. So so we we construct the 583 um, in the bibliographic record. So that's that's fine as well. 
Um, and then, of course, we're happy to take any completed holdings records with the 583s already constructed. Um, and when, when this data is sent to us, we, we do actually check all of the, the data to make sure that, um, that the, the information that, that, you, that you send us um, is, is appropriate for the particular um, title or, or span of holdings that you have. Because one of the, um, like, like OCLC, I think, and, and the, the cataloging, the general cataloging world, we've been, we, we go by the rules of, of successive entry um, cataloging. So um, we have, and I know that that hasn't always, that's, hasn't always been the, the rule for uh, local catalogs. So there, there have been times when we have gotten holdings um, for a title that, that went beyond the actual publication dates. They, they should have been put on a, um, you know, the title change and they should have been put on a, a successive um, record or title. Um, so as long as you provide us with this data that I've listed, on this slide, um, we will um, check um, in, in WorldCat to make sure that um, the OCLC number does go with that title and, and, the, and the ISSN is accurate and that your holdings um, do lie within the um, publication dates that are recorded on the record. Um, if, if they don't, we, we will let you know. And um, as I said, it, it um, it has it has happened, um, so um, and it's always great if you can give us the gaps in any condition information. Often, some often we will get condition information, particularly I think about binding um, anomalies in in the right in the field with um, the holdings, and if you can possibly separate that, that is um, enormously helpful to us. But otherwise. Um, we would we would retain that information just just put it in a separate field, and um, and I imagine that most of that is because people are, are outputting um, data from their ILS and that those those fields are coming together in the export. Um, but these are um, these are the the basic fields that that we need. And I don't have program listed up there because um, generally we just deal with one program at a time in, in terms of one spreadsheet. But if the program does include multiple uh, um, participants, um, you can put all of those, um, you can mix the, the holdings for those different participants in the same spreadsheet. You don't have to separate um, by university or anything like that, as long as, as the data is consistent within for each of those um, institutions. And here's just a, an example of a uh, spreadsheet that with some data in it. And this next um, is just an example of um, holdings um, of bib and, and holdings records that were, were provided to us by one participant. So. Um, this was just output right from their, their catalog. They let us know that what is in their 866 is what should go in the, um, the 583 subfield 3. And from there, with additional information that you can find in, in the record, we went ahead and created that um, the, a holdings record with the, the 583s. And here's an example of a CRL JSTOR record, and you can just see how the 583 is um, embedded right in the, um, the bib record, um, and not easy to read. <laughs> so it's much easier in a spreadsheet. So I can imagine why um, you would prefer to, to keep a spreadsheet locally. This, um, this slide is just a, an example of a con converted record um, either from getting the information from a spreadsheet or, uh, or this one actually came from the Linda Hall Library, which gave us the, both the bib and, and the holdings records. But this is, this is what they, 
this is what they have in the end. And it doesn't include any title information because that is all ingested into paper in another, um, as part of a, a different um, ingest uh, stream. And, and part of that is because we know that if people are giving us local records, there, there may be some variation in the title, and we are, are trying to make that, that title information as consistent as possible. And so we are, um, we are getting that information from a, a titles table that, that we are, are building. And this is just an example of um, a holdings record uh, created by CRL. And I've just circled that, that subfield I, indicating that um, it says not validated, indicating that, that we, generate, we created the, um, the gap statement. So I've just listed, um, I'm certainly not an expert on um, using the, the uh, 583 or the holdings records in, in OCLC. CRL um, has registered with them and we have, um, we were participants in the pilot project and we have, we continue to contribute records for our JSTOR collection to, to um, WorldCat, but um, that is um, handled by a colleague of mine. So, um, but these are sort of the lists that are, are important to them. And so if you do have a look at their guidelines, I just encourage you to, to have um, a close look at, at these because you can see that's the, these really do um, help in terms of the, um, the resource sharing. So this next um, slide is just a list of resources um, that you can follow up in terms of the 583. Um, the, you, know, you can look at paper, um, there, there's the PDA, and just information from um, all that, that goes into constructing the 583. So thank you very much for, uh, <laughs> for listening. Um, and I know we have a few questions, so just take a minute to have a look at one. And so, um, so I have a, a question, and I'll, I have a question about um, being committed to retain material um, that is is held not by um, not by uh, the institution that may have the 583 in in their catalog. Um, so I think that doesn't. That doesn't seem to me to to be a problem. I mean, that from the description of of that uh, question, I think it indicates that there there really is a partnership, um, an established partnership, and um, the material is simply being held, um, and and the commitment is that someone else will hold it. Someone in the program or in the partnership. And um, that um, recording that information locally, I, I think is, you know, it makes sense, makes sense to me. Um, I think one of, one of the reasons why we developed paper is, is so that programs could make a decision um, not to have to um, record that, that information locally. Um, in case the, the records were visible to patrons, I think, or users, um, um, so that those, those partnerships and where that material is held can all be recorded in paper. But, um, you know, I, in terms of recording that locally, I, I don't see any, any problems with that. Um, but I think, but that does bring up, I think, one, an issue that um, we, is sort of outside the scope of the 583, and that is establishing um, uh, agreements for, um, or formal agreements for um, archiving or shared print programs. Those are, um, those are very important, and most, and anything I think that you express in terms of the, um, the data or the holdings should stem from that, that formal agreement. And 
the way that paper um, paper ties those together by having it has a directory of programs as well as the um, the the list of, of records held by those programs. So um, certainly starting any um, any partnership with a formal agreement. Um, indicating where material is held by different participants, how long it's held, and what would happen to the ma material should the um, partnership dissolve um, are important aspects to that. So in terms of which set of subfield in that 583 you would use in your local catalog if someone else one of your partners was holding the material, I think you would use exactly the same subfields. Um, but you would use a, um, I think you would use a different, the, the one that would be different is the, the subfield um, indicating who's managing the material or where, and where the material is, is located. And, um, and depending on where the material, I suppose, is reviewed, even, even the, the site of the action. So I think you, um, in terms of the subfields, I think you'd want to look at the subfield J, um, the subfield F for the, the program that the material has, and um, the subfield um, 5. And what, what we don't include in, in paper, but OCLC does, is, is they do have a field for provenance. And I have to look back, but I think that's um, like the 561. Or something like that. So, so OCLC does list. Yes, it is the um, the 561 ownership and custodial history. So there there is room in the the full um, holdings record to sort of track that material. You know, it was once held by one institution, and now it's held by a, a partner. Um, in terms of how. Ready. Uh, we have a question about how ready um, does one have to be to send the records to paper. Um, I, um, I, I mean, I think if you're if you're working with a, a group of material, you probably want to to finish a, a you know the entire group of material or at least a substantial part, um, unless there's some compelling reason to um, submit part of the data. Um, because your your partners are going through, um, you know, a period of, of data analysis or comparison, um, but uh, we, um, you know, I think one thing is what we have learned over the past ten um, or twelve months or so is um, that we, you know, we have we certainly learn a lot by by doing, and we are, are perfectly willing to to work with you. Um, on some sort of trial runs or some practice runs or work with some samples. So um, you don't have to feel like, like you have all the answers. We can certainly work with you, um, I think, at any level of expertise you feel like you have. I think that um, is all the questions that had been submitted. Um, if I didn't answer them in, in uh, a way that actually expressed the intent of the question. Um, we'll give you a minute now to either resubmit or if there are other questions that people have, um, please feel free to, to ask. And um, I guess I do want to assure everyone that, you know, we have come to realize how much work is, is involved in preparing the um, the, the data for your, your print archives or your shared print programs. And we really think this is a certain, you know, creating the 583s or the holdings records for um, participants is a, a service that we think will, is, of, is of high value to you. So um, we, we, um, we are happy to, to work with you, um, you know, and your data. So um, I think that. Well, I guess if there aren't any um, further questions, I guess we won't um, need the whole hour. So thank you again um, for participating. Um, I appreciate your, um, your interest in, um, in both 
uh, CRL's work with paper and in just finding out about the 583. Thanks very much. Bye.